Thank you for joining me in my screencast. I want to acknowledge the place of learning for this project occurred on the unceded territory of the Clayley Tene First Nations people. My project is titled Classroom Engagement with Knowledge Holders through video conferencing. The purpose of this project is to explore how classroom learners can improve their engagement with knowledge holders through video conferencing and explore the question of how one can use First Peoples principles of learning to improve this process. Throughout the presentation, I will be using the term knowledge holder, which is equivalent to what the literature on the topic refers to as a guest speaker or guest lecturer. The premise with using the term knowledge holder is to incorporate the lens of First Peoples principles of learning. The content of my screencast will show my application of knowledge in fulfilling one of the components required for completing my Master's of Educational Technology degree at the University of Victoria. I will first provide some background on the project, then outline the actions taken to prepare for the video conference sessions, what was done during the video conference sessions, and activities completed after video conference sessions. The background. Due to COVID-19, many educators needed to make adjustments or pivot in the way curriculum is delivered. Starting this project, I had to also consider that if an outbreak occurred at the school or if a student was absent due to COVID-19 exposure and were being quarantined, the students would still have the opportunity to engage with knowledge holders who present through video conferencing. As well, I had to consider that if my school closed down, a continuation of learning could still occur with knowledge holders. Having a multi-access learning model was therefore essential prior to starting this project. Next, I want to let you know how video conferencing, First Peoples Principles of Learning, and curriculum content fit together in this project. The course that I taught for this project is Career and Life Education 10. The following shows the British Columbia Career and Life Education 10 big ideas that are outlined by the BC Ministry of Education. Next, we see the First Peoples Principles of Learning that were developed by the First Nations Education Committee situated in British Columbia, Canada. From both resources, I created the following graphic organizer, which shows how the First Peoples Principles of Learning goals can be applied to the big ideas found in the Career and Life Education 10 course. At the top of the graphic organizer, we have synchronous video conferencing incorporating both the curriculum and the First Peoples Principles of Learning with the ultimate objective of improving the engagement process of learners with knowledge holders. An increase in focus on technology-enabled participatory learning also leverages the orientation of today's and tomorrow's students for whom a digital environment is expected. I feel this quote from the BC Digital Literacy Framework is a principle that orients itself with this project quite well. Preparing for video conferencing. And the first topic is looking at the physical features of the classroom. Students were in the classroom for the video conference presentations. The seating arrangement initially had small groups of tables together to support and facilitate communication between peers on small group activities, discussions, and peer learning support. However, I had to make changes due to social distancing guidelines brought into the school. Seating was then organized to have a maximum amount of space between desks with all students facing one direction in the classroom. The technology. The technology used to facilitate the video conference sessions were the following. Classroom desktop computer with the Windows 10 operating system generic desktop speakers that sat on the teacher's desk, internet connection with supportive bandwidth, a generic projector, a screen centered at the front of the classroom, a generic HD 1080 webcam, but later changed to using a Logitech C920S Pro HD webcam, an Audio-Technica ATR2100X USB microphone, and a 15 meter extended USB cable. Many webcams on the market have a built-in mic. However, this creates limitations as to isolating engagement to whoever is closest to the camera. Therefore, it's important in having a microphone that can be moved around in the classroom, having a USB cable extension from the desktop to the microphone 
gave me accessibility needed for students to use a mic. Consideration must also be taken into account for having a mic that is durable enough to withstand accidental drops or bumps when being moved around. The Audio-Technica microphone is a dynamic mic and was chosen because it is more resilient to drops or falls compared to a condenser mic. Notably, there are very expensive video conference setups on the market for medium group presentations, but the tools I used were very cost effective and more realistic to replicate for other educators who wanted to have a video conference system placed in their classroom. The webcam, USB extension cord, and microphone were also shared with a colleague that was also able to support video conference sessions in their classroom. Next, I looked at establishing the classroom environment. One of the important elements in helping to facilitate communication is for setting up a positive learning environment where students feel comfortable around each other to speak out loud and share their thoughts. Throughout the course, students participated in group presentations, small group activities, talking circles, storytelling, and in-person knowledge folder sessions. As well, students established the learning expectations in the classroom as a group on their first day of class. These in-class activities help facilitate community of practice and social presence within the classroom. In addition, the course content of Career Life Education 10 coincides with improving social emotional skills, learning to network with others, and connects effectively with the first people's principles of learning. Prior to hosting a knowledge holder, I used Kretka and Kareno's 10 suggestions for preparing for a video conference. Uh, the first is no district and school policies for video conferencing and knowledge holders. The school district that I am in has a specific licensing agreement with a video conference provider that allows me to use this platform for engaging with knowledge holders and students. Prior to students engaging in video conferencing, students needed to sign documentation that gave permission for their ability to have their information shared as guided by the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act in British Columbia. The following document, created by my school district, allowed me to share the video of my students during synchronous video conference sessions, allowed them to use a microphone, and gave students the option of partaking in the meeting through texting questions to the knowledge holder. Gain parental permissions. The class that I'm facilitating this project has mostly grade 10 students mixed in with some grade 11 students. Due to the student's age, parental permission was not needed. However, if I did the project in the first quarter of our school year, parental permission would have been needed for students who were 14 years old and turning 15 by the end of the year. Outline objectives and ground rules. This part was for students to find out more about the topic of what the knowledge holder was going to speak of and to make connections about the subject. Using first people's principles of learning, I wanted students to not only make initial connections on the topic that were personal, but also to make connections to their community. This could be thinking of a family member, friend, or connecting to the place the knowledge holder is presenting from, such as sharing a story about their place. My role was to facilitate the community of practice and social presence building prior to the video conference session. Some of the activities we did either the day before or prior to the video conference session were the following. Independent exploration and research of the topic using the internet, small group discussion, classroom discussion, using a KWL organizer, the strategy of activating prior knowledge, the K, what you know, followed through with the W, what you want to learn prior to the session. This part is where students generated questions for the knowledge holder before the presentation. Finally, the L or what you learned activity was done after the video conference session. And I will elaborate and describe how I modified this portion later in the video. Number four, check stability of internet connections. This was not an issue at my school as we have direct wired internet service and have a large bandwidth but definitely a very important aspect, especially if the service is spotty, or if there are certain times during the day where an increase in usage can affect your ability to facilitate a video conference. As well, the knowledge holder needs to have the bandwidth capacity from where they are located to engage with the class. 
Next, complete practice runs with the other class and own class before beginning. In our context, we did not have another class. I had students practice using the video conferencing software with their phones a few days prior to the first event with the knowledge holder meeting the class. I was fortunate to have a document camera in my class paired with a projector and was able to show students with my phone as to how the software can be downloaded on a personal device. Students are able to download the program using the public school Wi-Fi and explored how to set up their account. I also gave time for students who didn't have their phone or wanted more time to explore the software the next day before we had our first in-class video session. In-classroom students with their phones would then have the opportunity to text questions to the knowledge holder, but with the audio and video features off. In addition, I outline the following guidelines. First, use your own personal device. It's optional, but not necessary to engage in the video conference session. As well, not all students feel comfortable asking questions out loud in class, and we want to provide an alternative means for you to communicate with the knowledge holder. Next, the video session is private. As well, students need to use their own name or pseudonym that the teacher is aware of prior to individuals entering the meeting. And finally, use appropriate language that is outlined in our school code of conduct. This also goes into the parameters of following the ground rules of the classroom. Have tech support available during the video conferencing collaboration. In this case, the tech support and troubleshooting was done by myself. Have a backup plan. I found the best way to help support communication is using my cell phone with a direct phone number with the knowledge holder. Sometimes the meeting was delayed, but not cancelled because of troubleshooting various issues surrounding the support of video or audio. Next, if using a knowledge holder, prep the speaker, have interview questions prearranged that are possibly designed and asked by the students. With knowledge holders that I met and built a relationship with, it was easier to provide feedback and to ask for feedback on how they felt the video conference meeting went. With meeting a new knowledge holder, I would speak with them on what they plan to present and indirectly suggest how they can improve their engagement with learners, such as sharing a personal story, something about themselves, and having the knowledge holder understand some of the interests the students have. None of my knowledge holders identified themselves as having Indigenous ancestry, but I did use the First Peoples Principles of Learning when bridging how connections can be made between students and knowledge holders communicating to the classroom through video conference. Number nine, consider time differences if doing an international video conferencing collaboration. The knowledge holders that met with my class were spread throughout the province of British Columbia and were in the same time zones as the class. However, this is a very important factor when planning out having a knowledge holder from another country or say from another province of Canada. And number 10, provide students with continuous feedback and reflection in addition to time for evaluation during and in between video conferencing sessions. So for classroom engagement during video conferencing, my role was to facilitate and support engagement between the knowledge holder speaking via video conferencing and the students who were in the classroom. The classroom activities that helped support this engagement were the following. Greeting and introduction from the classroom to the knowledge holder. Next, paraphrasing or repeating questions presented by the knowledge holder. Moving the microphone around the classroom for students to ask their questions. Getting the attention of the knowledge holder when a student had a question maintaining on-task behavior, adjusting the screen location of the knowledge holder when viewed by the classroom on the projector. There were times when the knowledge holder's slide presentation was not viewed properly because a portion of information was covered by their synchronous video box. Adjusting the audio output for not only the knowledge holder's voice, but also for video clips the knowledge holder may present to students. Changing the position of the webcam so as to not have it fixed on one specific group of learners in the classroom. 
However, I did acquire a second webcam that met the needs of offering a much greater panoramic view of the classroom and reduced my time with having to move the document camera around to scan the class. This created a greater opportunity for the knowledge holder to view the learners and improve social engagement. It allowed the knowledge holder to ask questions in which the students can provide a physical response, such as putting their hand up. Next, wrapping up the video conference session with the class saying and waving goodbye to the knowledge holder. As well, in one of our video conference sessions, students were able to communicate with the knowledge holder in a small group that range from one to five students. But in general, this is not the case with most of the knowledge holders who communicated in the classroom. Post activities from video conferencing. In extending Krutka and Crano's guidelines and using first people's principles of learning, I wanted students to give back to knowledge holders. Bartlett and all give such guidance in their principles of indigenous knowledge and found the following quote inspiring. Acknowledge that we need each other and must engage in a co-learning journey. I created a document that would reflect a co-learning journey and shared my vision and thoughts with our Indigenous Learning Centre at our school to get feedback on making improvements. As well, having students to self-reflect on their feelings, thoughts, values, and extending those connections to the people and places around them is a way to see the learning experience from an alternative perspective that relates to First Peoples principles of learning. After a video conference session, I collected students' reflections from what they wrote or were willing to share with me and gave those thoughts and experiences back to the knowledge holder. Creating a circle of reciprocation and building upon a shared experience supports the community of learning environment. Conclusion. My initial investigations with how to effectively facilitate video conferencing started in October of 2020. Video conference setup during this time had all of the same equipment, except that I was using the built-in webcam mic instead of the extended microphone. Questions were relayed from students to the teacher and then to the knowledge holder. I often found myself repeating the question because of the poor microphone quality. In addition, I had to follow our school policy on having the video feed off to avoid students being viewed. Only I was able to be viewed. At this point in time, I was still working on my literature review and exploring strategies to improve social presence, build a community of practice, and use first people's principles of learning. It wasn't until my second quarter class, which went from November and finished in January, that I was able to make greater strides with engagement. I had the proper microphone equipment and had the needed documentation for students to be seen on camera. I am currently teaching my third quarter class, which started in February and will finish in April. And so far during this period, I have implemented more strategies for students to be reflective of their experiences with communicating to knowledge holders. I had for each class either six or seven video conference sessions. Altogether, I was able to host 19 video conference sessions. Overall, I came to the following conclusions from this project. Students asked more questions and were more confident in speaking to the knowledge holder after more video conference sessions. Students' reflections improved as the routine of our video conference sessions progressed. It is imperative to create a classroom community and improve the social presence between learners as this will help facilitate engagement with the knowledge holder through video conference. This prior learning can also be extended to the use of personal electronic devices. Each class is unique and different, and should be, since all learners have stories and sharing that makes individuals special. In general, students prefer to choose communicating in the classroom with the microphone. Some students joined the video conference with their phones, but chose not to text questions directly to the knowledge holder. In each class, I would have a group of students who did not ask questions to the knowledge holder. As such, there is room to make improvements in increasing student engagement and to apply more first people's principles of learning. Having knowledge holders as experts in their field, speaking to us through video conference created new learning opportunities that otherwise would not be available. 
Knowledge holders responded to physical cues of the students when given the visual opportunity and would extend their questions for students to respond non-verbally. In addition, even though it is not the focus of my project, I found that I took more initiatives to prepare knowledge holders in speaking to the class through video conferencing and provide suggestions such as student interests. I let the knowledge holder understand that a sharing of learning from students would be provided to them after the video conference session. Although my video conference sessions had non-Indigenous knowledge holders, including myself, I did not think that this should be a roadblock for implementing Indigenous ways of learning. However, this does not retract from how enriching and important it is to have Indigenous knowledge holders communicate with our learners, as there are stories and experiences that need to come from the individual, as that itself has meaning. Even though we had in-class sessions with Indigenous knowledge holders, it still poses the question of how student engagement through video conferencing might have varied. Thank you for your time in viewing my project on classroom engagement with knowledge holders through video conferencing.